Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making what is quite possibly the world's best Reuben sandwich. Now, Alex and I literally made tens of thousands of these things during our time at Yesteryear Country Market. And there's a lot of different ways you can cook them. You can put them in the oven under the broiler and you can make them in sandwich presses and all that stuff. But the best way to make them is on a griddle and use a little butter. So you need some corned beef. And we have our corned beef that's left over from our corned beef and cabbage our St. Patrick's Day celebration, and you need some sauerkraut. The better the sauerkraut, the better your sandwich. You need rye bread. The better your rye bread, the better your sandwich. Swiss cheese, some butter, and you need either some Thousand Island dressing or some hot mustard. Lots of folks prefer the hot mustard, so whatever kind of dressing you like to top yours with, that's fine. We're going to start by buttering our rye bread and putting it on our griddle. Now, you can be pretty generous with this. You do want to preheat your griddle. You don't want to throw anything on a cold griddle because if you throw it on a cold griddle, it's going to stick. And nobody wants their rye bread tore all to pieces on their Reuben sandwich. And we're just going to add that to the griddle as we get it buttered. Butter side toward the griddle. We're going to do it just like a grilled cheese. This is kind of thin rye bread. Probably something a little bit thicker might be a little bit better, but this will work. We're in Tazewell, Tennessee. This ain't exactly rye bread country. David used to make a pickle rye yesteryear, which makes an excellent Reuben. If you happen to be somewhere where you've got a deli and they make pickle rye, get you some pickle rye to make this out of. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add me some cheese to my bread so that it'll be melting. And this again is also kind of thin. So I'm going to do three pieces on here. And this one here I'll kind of tear it in half so it's out toward the end because it was already doubled in the middle. You want to go ahead and put you plenty of thinly sliced corned beef. Now you can go to the deli and get this if you don't have any leftover and have them slice it real thin. I just sliced up our leftover roast. And that's going to need a little bit of butter under it or it's going to stick. So just to add some butter in there with it. Make sure you got plenty of corned beef there. Don't be stingy with it. And we're also going to put our sauerkraut on our grill. And we're definitely going to put a little bit of butter under our sauerkraut. Now you don't need to drain it, but you do want to kind of scoop it off the top. Maybe squeeze a little bit of the juice out as you scoop it off and throw it on there. And how much sauerkraut you want is up to you. But after making 10 or 20 or 200,000 of these things, what we found is that most folks like it with plenty of sauerkraut on it. And if you don't get plenty on it, Folks just don't like it. Keep an eye on everything and don't let it burn. See, that's getting toasted, but it ain't burning. That one's not as toasted. So maybe I'll swap places with them. Move this one on down over the heat a little bit more. Now you can grill both sides of your bread if you want to. We didn't generally do that. We just did one side. Go ahead and mix that sauerkraut kind of up in your corned beef. It's actually going to make it taste better if you mix it up and heat it together. And that's one of the secrets to making this sandwich the best you've ever had. Okay, that's good and brown. I'm going to go ahead and get my bread off the griddle. I don't want it to burn. My cheese is nice and melted. And this is just about hot. It literally just takes a minute to cook these if you've got a nice hot grill. Make sure though your sauerkraut and your corned beef are thoroughly heated. 
and the thinner sliced corned beef works better. Where I had this left over, I just sliced it with a paring knife. And once you got that corned beef heated and the sauerkraut, go ahead and kind of pile it on top of your cheese. Make sure you kind of spread everything out there. You want to get the sauerkraut and the corned beef even on it. You don't want a big pile of sauerkraut in one place and a big pile of corned beef in the other. That don't taste very good. If you're using your leftover um, corned beef roast from St. Patrick's Day, you can shred it too. Not just slice it, but actually shred it. And you can get them to shave you corned beef in the deli. They'll shave it up. They don't mind in the least. And now all we're going to do is we're going to top it with either some dressing or some hot mustard. And this is just to taste however much you like. But kind of spread it on there. Don't put it all on in one big lump because nobody likes to bite into a sandwich and get squirted with dressing or mustard either one. And top it and serve it while it's hot. And that is all there is to a traditional Reuben sandwich. And I promise you, if you cook it like this on the grill and put a little butter on there and grill your bread and stuff, it will be the best one you ever ate. In honor of St. Patrick's Day, I want to share with you what St. Patrick shared with Ireland. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you don't have the peace of God's forgiveness in your life, I want to encourage you to seek Him with your whole heart. Ask a Christian friend, but find Him. Don't continue to live a broken life because God is waiting to make you whole and Jesus is waiting to forgive you. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.